Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over section 8.15 of our virtual algebra 2 text on polynomials. We're going to be looking at how to apply Descartes' rule of signs. The kind of problem we'll be solving in this presentation is presented here in this sample question where you have to find the possible numbers of positive real zeros for this um, polynomial function. If this sounds like what you're looking for, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe buttons. And don't forget there are five practice problems at the end of this tutorial that would like you to try out to demonstrate mastery of the contents of this presentation. To gain access to our entire Algebra 2 course, Algebra 1, Geometry, Pre-Calc, and Calculus, take a look at the links in the description below or visit our website at mathgotserved.com. All right, to get us started, we're going to take a look at what Descartes' rule of signs um, is. So this is our website, mathgotserved.com. We're going to scroll down to the, our must-know formulas, and then we're just going to advance the slide all the way down to Descartes' rule of signs. So let's go ahead and do the advancement. Let's go all the way to Descartes' rule of signs. All right, there you have it. Descartes' rule of signs. So um, they basically help us to determine the possible number of positive and negative zeros of any polynomial function. All right. So number one is for positive. It tells us that the possible number of positive real zeros of a function f of x is equal to the number of sign changes of f of x or multiples of two less. So when we're talking about multiples of two, we're counting down by two. Okay. So think about it that way. If you if you have um, your result is an even number, then you just count down by even numbers. If your result is an odd number, then you count down by odd numbers. Number two, the possible number of negative real zeros of a function is equal to the number of sign changes or variation of f of negative x. So you see the difference here. For the positive uh, positive real zeros is f of x. We're looking at sign changes for f of x, but for um, negative real zeros, we're looking at f composed with negative x, okay? So the number of sign changes of f of negative x or multiples of two less than that, so counting down by twos also. All right, so the instructions for the examples we're working on are for us to state the possible number of positive and negative zeros of the given functions, and then we're gonna um, summarize the possible complex zeros distribution using a chart. Okay, so for uh, problem number one, let's say we have the given polynomial f of x, minimize that, equals uh, 2x to the fifth power plus 3x to the third minus, two, oh, minus 3x to the second plus 5x minus 1, okay? So this is the quintic polynomial with uh, five terms that was presented at the opening of this um, presentation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to start off with the um, positive, the possible number of positive real zeros. Okay, so positive real zeros. <clears throat> All right, so one thing you want to keep in mind is that when you want to start working with a function, you want to make sure that the polynomial meets the following criteria. Number one, it has to be written in standard form. So we write in standard form. And secondly, uh, you do not need um, placeholders, all right? So no need for placeholders. So if you're missing a degree term, you do not need to uh, insert a placeholder for that. So let's say you were working on synthetic division or long division, then you have to insert placeholders after placing it in standard form. But when we are working on Descartes' rule of signs, um, you do not need placeholders. All right? So let's write the polynomial. f of x is equal to 2x to the fifth plus 3x to the third minus 3x squared plus 5x minus 1. So for the possible number of positive real zeros, we're looking for the number of sign change or sign variations um, for f of x, all right? So let's outline what the signs are for each term. The first term is positive. Second term is positive. The, the, the quadratic term is negative. 
the linear term is positive and then the constant is negative. Okay, so you notice that it's already in standard form, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, in descending order of degrees. And even though the um, quartic term is missing, we didn't insert a placeholder for that because the sign of 0 is not applicable. 0 doesn't have any orientation, okay? All right, so let's see here. Um, so we're going to count the number of sign changes or sign variations. So we have, uh, what do we have from here to here? That's from positive to negative, that's the first sign change. And then from negative to positive, that's another sign change. And then from positive to negative, that goes another sign change. So we have first sign change, second sign change, and then the third sign change. So we have a total of three sign changes. Okay, so let's write it down. Number of sign changes or variations is three so what does that tell us well using Descartes rule of signs we can figure out the possible number possible number of um, positive zeros okay possible number of positive zeros um, are going to be either the total number of sign changes which is three or multiples of two less Okay, so if we count down from three by twos all the way down to um, zero or one, we have three minus two, which is equal to one, and we can't go any lower because we're gonna go negative, all right? So our answers are either three positive real zeros or one, all right? So this is what it means by the number of sign changes or multiples of two less. You're counting down by even numbers or by twos, okay? All right, so that's that for positive real zeros. Now let's take a look at uh, negative real zeros. So for negative real zeros, we're gonna start with um, what we had originally. The original function is two x to the fifth plus three x to the third minus 3x squared plus 5x or 15x plus 5x minus 1. Okay. All right. So we're looking for f of negative x. What is that? f of negative x. So f of negative x just simply means that you replace all the x's in f of x with um, negative x, right? So let's bring that down. So it's going to be um, 2 times uh, negative x to the fifth plus 3 times negative x to the third minus 3 times negative x squared. plus 5 times negative x minus 1, okay? All right, so it's a simple way to help you simplify this is just remember that if the power of a term is even, you keep the sign, and if it's odd, you flip the sign, okay? So let's write that down. Uh, even powers, even, you keep the sign, and then odd, you flip the sign. All right, so this this one right here is five, so it's odd. This is three, that's odd. This is two, that's even. This is one, that's odd. And this is negative, this is zero, so that's considered even, two. All right, because it's constant, it doesn't change. So what am I saying here? So all the terms with odd powers, you flip their signs. That's what's gonna come out. And then all the, all the uh, terms with even powers you keep the sign. The reason is that when you're pairing up odd signs, you're always going to be left with one negative, which makes the entire expression negative. And then if it's even, all the minuses pair up so it becomes positive. Okay? So this one you flip the sign, negative 2x to the fifth is just a neat little shortcut. This one you flip the sign, negative 3x to the third. This one you keep the sign for the quadratic term. Linear term has an odd power, so you flip the sign 
5x. And then this one, you keep the sign for the constant power 0. So that's what you have right there. All right, so remember for the negative real zeros, we're looking at the sign variations or sign changes for f of negative x, which is what we just did. So let's outline the signs of each term, negative, 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 negative. So how many sign changes or variations do we have here? Absolutely none, all negatives, okay? So number of sign changes or variations is zero. So what are the possible number of negative real zeros for this case? Possible number of negative real zeros is zero. Okay, so there goes the answer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, organize our possible number of zeros. Let's organize a chart to help you see what could possi what will uh, could possibly happen when we solve this problem. All right, so let's make a chart here. We're going to go more into this in the next lesson on the fundamental theorem of algebra. So this is just getting you ready for that. Okay. And bam. All right, so in the first column, we're going to be looking at um, the real zeros, okay? So for the real zeros, let me write that again. So this first two are real zeros. So for the real zeros, for all real numbers, okay, they're either positive or negative. So for the real zeros, it's either going to be positive or negative. So let's look at what we have here. Um, so we have positive or negative. All right, so in our solutions, we notice that the real zeros and negatives are, there are no negative zeros in this particular problem, so zero, zero. But for positive, you could either have three real positive real zeros or you could have one positive real zero. All right, okay, so your zeros could either be real or guess what? They could be imaginary, okay? So let's take a look at that. Uh, concerning imaginary zeros, um, how many could we have? Well, we just have to use imaginary. We just have to use FTA to figure this out, okay? So FTA tells us the total complex zeros that we have. So the total complex zeros according to the FTA is basically the degree of the polynomial. The degree of the polynomial is 5, so we know for sure you're going to have a maximum of 5 complex zeros, um, combination of positive negatives and imaginary where applicable. All right, so let's work this out. So if you have 3 real zeros and 0, I'm sorry, if you have 3 positive real zeros and 0 negative real zeros, and there are a total of five, that means you must have two imaginary zeros. So three plus two is equal to five. Perfect. And then if you have one real zero and no, I mean one positive real zero and no negative real zero and a total of five complex. Remember, the complex is a combination of real plus imaginary, okay? So you, the mathematics has to work out. So if you have 1 plus what gives you 5. If there's only one real, which is positive, and there are a total of 5, a combination of real and imaginary, then there must be 4, oh snap, wrong color, there must be 4 imaginary zeros. All right, so this is just a total summary of um, what the zeros look like. For more detail on how this works, we'd like you to watch our next presentation on the fundamental theorem of algebra, and then we're going to go in, in depth into finding not just the signs and numbers, but what they are exactly. All right, so here are the five practice problems that we promised to have you work on um, at, the, at the start of this video. So go ahead and pause this video presentation at this time. Try out these five practice problems. All you're doing is specifying the possible number of positive real zeros and a possible number of negative real zeros. When you're done, click on the playback button 
and we are going to reveal what the correct answers are. Alrighty, welcome back. Hopefully you had a chance to try out the problems. Let's take a look at what the solutions are for number one. Um, the possible number of um, positive real zeros is just one. Bam. One sign variation for f of x. Um, and then the possible number of negative real zeros. We're looking at sign variations for f of negative x is four, counting them by two, two, or zero. Bam. For number two, the possible number of positive real zeros is just one, only one sign variation for f of x. Possible number of negative real zeros. We're looking at sign variations for f of negative x. Uh, in this case, we have it's either four, counting that by two, two, or zero. For number three, the possible number of positive real zeros is the number of sign variations for the original function f of x, only one sign variation, and then the possible number of negative real zeros, we're looking at the sign variations for f of negative x. Remember, for odd powers, you, you flip the sign, for even powers, you keep the sign. If you do that, you're gonna have um, four sign variations or multiples of two less, four, two, or zero. For number four, possible number of positive real zeros, sign variations for f of x is either, we have two sign variations or multiples of two less, two or zero. Okay, and then um, for a possible number of um, negative real zeros, we're looking at the sign variations for f of negative x. Okay, so that's going to be two or zero. Last but not the least, number six, um, or number five, sorry, the possible number of uh, positive real zeros for number five is uh, sign variations for this function. There are two of them. So it's gonna be two or multiples of two less, two or zero. And then the possible number of negative real zeros. We're looking for the sign variations for f of negative x. There are two sign variations for f of negative x. So we have two or multiples of two less, two or zero. Alrighty, so here are the solutions to the five practice problems. How well did you do? Did you get all five correct? Let us know how well you did in the comment section below. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of polynomial functions and Descartes rule of sign, do give us a like or a thumbs up. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other presentations such as this. Tons of support resources can be found at mathgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.